Okay, good morning, good morning, or good afternoon, good afternoon, depending on what part of the country you're with us from. Ke Coach Kevin here, and let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen with you real quickly and point out some things, especially if this is your first opportunity to be with us, that we have a Facebook group that coincides with our meetup group. Oh, well. Exact same name. I want to be really rich and I do not apologize for it. So you can find us by going into your own Facebook <clears throat> account, going into search Facebook and type in, I want to be really rich and I do not apologize for it. And you can find us and just come ask to join us. Uh, the other way is you could go directly to facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash I want to be really rich. And if everybody would put themselves on mute for right now, I'd really appreciate that. I'm getting some noise in the background. I think Paula, you might be on. Thank you. All right. Now, why would you want to join the group? Let me point out a couple of things. Uh, first of all, if we have anything special to announce for the group, you'll find it typically pinned to the top. The other reason would be is we actually, as long as I remember, which I typically do, uh, to hit the record button, you will see that we will go ahead and put the different meetings that we have in here. So this was yesterday, here was the day before. So sometimes you guys miss a meeting and you wanna go back and get caught up or maybe you attended a meeting you really liked, but you didn't you know, take the notes you wanted or you wanna review it. So you can always come back into the Facebook group, find the meeting that you wanna find and you know, watch the recording. So that's another reason that you might wanna be in here. And it's another way to interact with us outside of the 45 minutes or so we have each day, Monday through Friday. All right. Next thing I wanna point out to you guys and is <clears throat> we, the way that we function is we started November 5th of last year. That was our first day as a meetup group. And that was our first session together. And we, we go through different material at different times. Um, sometimes the material that we choose to go through will take a few days. Sometimes something might just take a day. Sometimes something might take a week or two uh, to go through it, depending on what it is that we're, we're studying together and learning together. What I like to do typically is all these books and, and the materials that I'm sharing with you, if it's a book and I can find it for free somewhere, um, I show you where I can, where I got it for free. I probably already, well, not probably, I own all these books already on Kindle and on Audible and some of them in paperback form. They're, they're all books that I've read. Some I've read as many as 40 plus times. Some I've only read a couple of two, three times, but I've read all of them and I've studied all of them and have gone through the material. I want you guys to be able to do the same thing, but I don't necessarily want you to have to go out every time we come up with something new and go buy a book. So I try and search for it, if it's a book, and then see if I can find free copies where you guys can go download it. And then if it's something that's not a book, it's material that I have, then I post it in the Facebook group and create a file out of it so you can access it. So we are currently, the previous material that we've gone over, Highly recommend you go back and watch the videos and things, but eventually what I intend to do instead of just going through 50 different things is to go deep into maybe four or five different things. Um, the depth helps it become subconscious for us. Whereas if we just keep going on for entertainment purposes, then yeah, it's great at, a, at an intellectual level, we might learn to understand the law of attraction we might learn to understand how our mind works, but we won't have made it a subconscious practice for us and we're not as likely to get results. That's why I will probably go through maybe, you know, four or five different things that will help us in retraining ourselves to go deep with it instead of being so surface with it. What we're in the process of doing right now, we already went over the different laws um, we've gone over a lot of ways that people, or a lot of ways, we've gone over how to actually manifest more money and wealth in our life. We've gone over the laws to know why we haven't necessarily, people haven't gotten the results that they wanted because they didn't understand those laws and they're disobeying them. And now we're going through how the subconscious mind functions so that we know how to get the subconscious mind to work for us instead of against us. We're currently going through a book called The Power of Your Subconscious Mind. 
I just type power of your subconscious mind PDF into Google. And I don't know, first, second, third result, doesn't matter, whatever popped up organically. I looked at several of them. The one I like is this one. It'll come up, it'll say the power of your subconscious mind dash the logos center. You see up here, it says www.logoscenter.org. Don't worry about the logo center thing. I have no idea what that is. Here's what I do know. When I clicked on the link, here's what happened. The book itself immediately popped up. <laughs> and what I did, now obviously this isn't the first page of the book. I'm not gonna go there right now. 130 is the page we're actually on right now. But I went ahead and took the book and downloaded. I didn't have to put in my name, email address or anything. So that was kind of cool. Went ahead, downloaded it onto my computer. Most of you guys have a copy of your own. And if you use this one, the reason I would suggest that you use this one is because you'll, when I say we're on page, whatever, we're all on the same page in the book <laughs> because this is the page it is in the PDF file. So if you wanna go get a copy, that's fine. You Now you know where you can go get one for free. If you don't choose to get a copy, that's fine. I'm sharing my screen anyway, and you can watch it that way. However, you're probably going to want a copy or at least go back in the Facebook group and watch previous sessions because Joseph Murphy, the author of this book, has gone into quite a bit of depth on how to manifest money and wealth and other things in your life. We obviously still got a ways to go. And what I can tell you too is he may, as we go through this today, may or may not talk specifically about wealth and money. That's okay. <laughs> that somebody pointed that out a couple days ago and said, hey, this meetup is called, you know, I want to be really rich. I do not apologize for it. And what you read through today so far, none of it talked about money. <laughs> and I'm like, and I get that, okay. However, if your subconscious mind is programmed in a way that you aren't receiving all the money and wealth you want in your life, you need to know how to reprogram your subconscious mind to receive it. And Joseph has talked about that in previous chapters, but he's also showing you how it works for anything and everything, how your subconscious mind can be your greatest friend or possibly your greatest enemy when it comes to living the life that you want, because the subconscious mind is what puts us on autopilot in 95 to 97% of everything we do every single day is predominantly habit and on autopilot, okay? So what we're going to do now, the way that we function is I'm going to start reading. I'll share some commentary where I think it's appropriate, might be helpful. You may have some questions, you may have comments, you may have things that you would like to share. Totally cool at the right time. So when's the right time? I like to leave about 10, 15 minutes at the end of what we're doing to give you that opportunity. If you're typing things in the chat, I need to tell you that I pay zero attention to chat, okay? just so you know that and you're not like, hey, why is he ignoring me? Because I'm trying to go through the material, but also we're going to have a chance to have actual conversation anyhow. And that's when I would prefer to interact with you guys in that way. You can still type something into chat if you like, just understand that everybody else will be seeing it. They might pay attention, they might not, but I'm not gonna be paying attention to it. But I will give you your opportunity again to share what you like or ask whatever you like when the time is appropriate to do so. All right, so I'm gonna get a quick drink of water here and then we're gonna hop right into this. Okay. <clears throat> the nagging wife. Many times the reason a wife nags is because she gets no attention. Her legitimate craving for love and affection expresses itself in a way that pushes her partner farther away. Give your wife attention and show your appreciation. Praise and exalt her many good points. Another type of nagging reflects the desire to make the partner conform to a particular pattern. There are a few quicker ways to drive a partner away. Wives and husbands must be on their guard not to be scavengers, always looking for petty faults or errors in each other. Let each give attention and praise for the constructive and wonderful qualities in the other. The brooding husband. If a man begins to brood or grows morbid against his wife because of things she said or did, he is, psychologically speaking, committing adultery. One of the meanings of adultery is idolatry, which means giving attention to or uniting mentally with that which is negative and destructive. 
When a man is silently resenting his wife and is full of hostility toward her, he is unfaithful. He is not faithful to his marriage vows, which are to love, cherish, and honor her all the days of his life. The man who is brooding, bitter, and resentful can swallow his sharp remarks, abate his anger, and go to great lengths to be considerate, kind, and courteous. He can deftly skirt the differences. Through praise and mental effort, he can get out of the habit of antagonism. As he soaks his subconscious mind with thoughts of peace, harmony, and love, he will find that he gets along better not only with his wife, but with everyone in his life. Assume the harmonious state, and eventually you will find peace and harmony. The great mistake. It is a great mistake to discuss your marital problems or difficulties with neighbors and relatives. Suppose, for example, a wife tells a neighbor, John treats my mother abominably, drinks in excess or to excess, and is constantly abusive and insulting. The wife is degrading and belittling her husband in the eyes of everyone she speaks to. Moreover, as she discusses and dwells upon the shortcomings of her husband, she is actually creating these states within herself. Who is thinking and feeling it? She is. And as you think and feel, so you are. Relatives will usually give you the wrong advice. It is usually biased and prejudiced because it is not given in an impersonal way. Any advice you receive which violates the golden rule, which is a cosmic law, is not good or sound. It is well to remember that no two human beings ever live beneath the same roof without dashes of temperament, periods of hurt, and strain. Never display the unhappy side of your marriage to your friends. Keep your quarrels to yourself. Refrain from criticism and condemnation of your partner. Don't try to remake your partner. Husbands and wives must not try to remake their partners over into a second edition of themselves. Let me repeat that. <laughs> this is definitely good stuff. Husbands and wives must not try to make their partners over into a second edition of themselves. The tactless attempts to change them is an affront, a statement that they are not worthy in themselves. These attempts are always foolish and many times lead to the destruction of the marriage. Attempting to alter someone destroys pride and self-esteem and arouses a spirit of contra bleh, contrariness and resentment that can prove fatal to the marriage bond. Adjustments are needed, of course. None of us is perfect, and that holds for marriage partners as well. But if you have a good look inside your own mind and study your character and behavior, you will find enough shortcomings to keep you busy for the rest of your life. If you think, I will make him or her over into what I want, you're looking for trouble and the divorce court. You're asking for misery. You will have to learn the hard way that there is no one to change but yourself. Pray together and stay together through steps in prayer. The first step, never carry over from one day to another accumulated irritations arising from little disappointments. Be sure to forgive each other for any sharpness before you retire at night. The moment you awaken in the morning, claim infinite intelligence is guiding you in all your ways. Send out loving thoughts of peace, harmony, and love to your marriage partner to all members of the family, and to the whole world. The second step, say grace at breakfast. Give thanks for the wonderful food, for your abundance, and for all your blessings. Make sure that no problems, worries, or arguments shall enter into the table conversation. The same applies at dinner time. Say to your wife or husband, I appreciate all you're doing, and I radiate love and goodwill to you all day long. The third step, the husband and wife should alternate in praying each night. Do not take your marriage partner for granted. Show your appreciation and love. I think, appreci or think appreciation and goodwill rather than condemnation, criticism, and nagging. The way to build a peaceful home and a happy marriage is to use a foundation of love, beauty, harmony, mutual respect, faith in God, and all good things. Read the 23rd, 27th, and 91st Psalm, the 11th chapter of Hebrews, the 13th chapter of 1 Corinthians, and other great texts of the Bible before going to sleep. As you practice these truths, your marriage will grow more and more blessed through the years. Review your actions. Ignorance of mental and spiritual laws is the cause of all marital unhappiness. 
by praying scientifically together, you stay together. The best time to prevent divorce is before marriage. If you learn how to pray in the right way, you will attract the right mate for you. Marriage is the union of a man and a woman who are bound together by love. Their hearts beat as one, and they move onward, upward, and Godward. Marriage does not guarantee happiness. People find happiness by dwelling on the eternal truths of God and the spiritual values of life. Then the man and woman can contribute to each other's happiness and joy. You attract the right mate by dwelling on the qualities and characteristics you admire in a woman or a man. Then your subconscious mind will bring you together in divine order. You must build into your mentality the mental equivalent of what you want in a marriage partner. If you want to attract an honest, sincere, and loving partner in life, you must be honest, sincere, and loving yourself. You do not have to repeat mistakes in marriage. When you really believe you can have the type of man or woman you idealize, it is done unto you as you believe. To believe is to accept something as true. Accept your ideal companion now mentally. Do not wonder how, why, or where you will meet the mate you're praying for. Trust implicitly the wisdom of your subconscious mind. It has the power to carry out its mission. You don't have to assist it. Let me repeat that. You don't have to assist it. You don't have to assist it. You are mentally divorced when you indulge in peeves, grudges, ill will, and hostility toward your marriage partner. You're mentally dwelling with error in your mind. Adhere to your marriage vows. I promise to cherish, love, and honor him or her all the days of my life. Cease projecting fear patterns to your marriage partner. Project love, peace, harmony, and goodwill and your marriage will grow more beautiful and more wonderful through the years. Radiate love, peace, and goodwill to each other. These vibrations are picked up by the subconscious mind, resulting in mutual trust, affection, and respect. A nagging partner is usually seeking attention and appreciation. He or she is craving love and affection. Praise and exalt their many good points. Show them that you love and appreciate them. Partners who love each other do not do anything unloving or unkind in word, manner, or action. Love is what love does. In marital problems, always seek expert advice. You should not go to a carpenter to pull a tooth. Neither should you discuss your marriage problems with relatives or friends. If you need counsel, go to a trained person. Never try to make over your wife or husband. These attempts are always foolish and tend to destroy the pride and self-esteem of the other. Moreover, they arouse a spirit of resentment that can prove fatal to the marriage bond. Cease trying to make the other a second edition of yourself. Pray together and you will stay together. Scientific prayer solves all problems. Mentally picture your wife as she ought to be, joyous, happy, healthy, and beautiful. See your husband as he ought to be, strong, powerful, loving, harmonious, and kind. Maintain this mental picture and you will experience the marriage made in heaven, which is harmony and peace your subconscious mind, and your happiness. William James, father of American psychology, said that the greatest discovery of the 19th century was not the realm of physical science. The greatest discovery was the power of the subconscious touched by faith. And every human being is that limitless reservoir of power that can overcome any problem in the world. True and lasting happiness will come into your life the day you get the clear realization that you can overcome any weakness, the day you realize that your subconscious can solve your problems, heal your body, and prosper you beyond your fondest dream. You may have been very happy when you became engaged to the partners, partner of your dreams. You may have felt happy when you graduated from college, when you got married, when your child was born, or when you won a great victory or a prize. You can go on and list other experiences that made you happy. However, no matter how marvelous these experiences are, they do not give real lasting happiness. They are transitory. The book of Proverbs gives the answer. Whosoever trusteth in the Lord, happy is he. When you trust in the Lord, the power and wisdom of your subconscious mind to lead, guide, govern, and direct all your ways, you will become poised, serene, and relaxed. And I can share with you guys that that is totally true. As you radiate love, peace, and goodwill to all, you're really building a superstructure of happiness 
for all the days of your life. You must choose happiness. Happiness is a state of mind. There is a phrase in the Bible that says, choose ye this day whom ye will serve. You have the freedom to choose happiness. This may seem extraordinarily simple, and it is. Perhaps this is why people stumble on the way to happiness. They do not see the simplicity of the key to happiness. The great things of life are simple, dynamic, and creative. They produce well-being and happiness. St. Paul reveals to you how you can think your way into a life of dynamic power and happiness in these words. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. How to choose happiness. Begin now to choose happiness. This is how you do it. When you open your eyes in the morning, say to yourself, divine order takes charge of my life today and every day. All things work together for good for me today. This is a new and wonderful day for me. There will never be another day like this one. I am divinely guided all day long, and whatever I do will prosper. Divine love surrounds me, enfolds me, and enwraps me, and I go forth in peace. Whenever my attention wanders away from that which is good and constructive, I will immediately bring it back to the contemplation of that which is lovely and of good report. I am a spiritual and mental magnet attracting to myself all things that bless and prosper me. I'm going to be a wonderful success in all my undertakings today. I am definitely going to be happy all day long. Start each day in this manner. Then you will be choosing happiness and you will be a radiant, joyous person. He made it a habit to be happy. A number of years ago, I stayed for about a week in a farmer's house in Conmara on the west coast of Ireland. My host seemed always to be singing and whistling and was full of good humor. I asked him the secret of his happiness. Sure, it's a habit with me, he replied. Every morning when I awaken and every night before I go to sleep, I bless my family, the crops, the cattle, and thank God for the wonderful harvest. This farmer has made a practice of this for over 40 years. As you know, thoughts repeated regularly and systematically sink into the subconscious mind and become habitual. He discovered that happiness is a habit. Let me repeat some of this. This farmer made a practice of this for over 40 years. 40 years. As you know, thoughts repeated regularly and systematically sink into the subconscious mind and become habitual. As you know, thoughts repeated regularly and systematically sink into the subconscious mind to become habitual. He discovered that happiness is a habit. You must desire to be happy. There is one important point to remember about being happy. You must sincerely desire to be happy. There are people who've been depressed, dejected, and unhappy so long that they were, that were they suddenly made happy by some wonderful, good, joyous news, they would react like the woman who once said to me, it is wrong to be so happy. <laughs> they have become so accustomed to the old mental patterns that they do not feel at home being happy. They long to return to their familiar, depressed, unhappy state. I knew an elderly woman in England who had arthritis for many years. She would pat herself on the knee and say, my arthritis is bad today. I can't possibly go out. My arthritis keeps me miserable. As a result of her condition, the woman got a lot of attention from her son, daughter, and neighbors. She really wanted her arthritis. She enjoyed her misery, and she called it, as she called it. On the level of her subconscious mind, she did not really want to be happy. I suggested a curative procedure to her, wrote down some biblical verses, and told her that if she gave attention to these truths, her mental attitude would undoubtedly change. Her faith and confidence would be restored to health. She was not interested. Like many people, she suffered from a peculiar mental morbid streak. She enjoyed being miserable and sad, or at least she enjoyed the benefits her misery brought her. Why choose unhappiness? Many people choose unhappiness without realizing they are doing so. 
They do so by entertaining such ideas as these. Today is a black day. Everything is going wrong. I'm not going to succeed. Everyone is against me. Business is bad and it's get it going to get worse. I'm always late. I can never get the breaks. He can, but I can't. If you have this attitude of mind, the first thing in the morning, you will attract all these experiences to you and you will be very unhappy. Begin to realize that the world you live in is determined largely by what goes into your mind. Marcus Aurelius, the great Roman philosopher and sage said, a man's life is what his thoughts make of it. The leading American philosopher of the 19th century, Ralph Waldo Emerson said, a man is what he thinks all day long. The thoughts you habitually entertain in your mind have the tendency to actualize themselves in physical conditions. Let me repeat that. And this is for the good or bad. The thoughts you habitually entertain in your mind, so habitually entertain in your mind, have the tendency, so habitually would be repetitively, day after day after day, enter into your mind, have the tendency to actualize themselves, become real, become physical, actualize themselves in physical conditions. Make certain you do not indulge in negative thoughts, defeatist thoughts, or unkind, depressing thoughts. Recall frequently to your mind that you can experience nothing outside your own mentality. If I had a million dollars, then I'd be happy. Wealth in and of itself will not make you happy. On the other hand, it is not a deterrent to happiness. Today, many people try to buy happiness by buying things, high definition television, the latest car, expensive designer clothes, a house in the country, but happiness cannot be purchased or procured in that way. The kingdom of happiness is in your thought and feeling. Too many people have the idea that it takes something artificial to produce happiness. Some say if I were elected mayor, made CEO of the corporation, featured the society page or the paper, I would be happy. The truth is that happiness is a mental and spiritual state. A promotion or external honor will not yield happiness. Your strength, joy, and happiness consists in finding out the law of divine order and right action lodged in your subconscious mind and applying these principles in all phases of your life. He found happiness to be the harvest of a quiet mind. When I was lecturing in San Francisco some years ago, I was approached by a man who was very unhappy and dejected over the way his business was going. He was the general manager of a corporation. His heart was filled with resentment toward the vice president and the president of the company. He felt that their opposition to his ideas was leading the company in a terrible direction. Profits were declining, as was market share. The company's share price was also going down, which concerned him greatly because much of his compensation was in the form of stock options. This is how he solved his business problem. The first thing each morning he affirmed quietly as follows. All those working in our corporation are honest, sincere, cooperative, faithful, and full of goodwill to all. They are mental and spiritual links in the chain of this corporation's growth, welfare, welfare and prosperity. I radiate love, peace, and goodwill in my thoughts, words, and deeds to my two associates and to all those in the company. The president and the vice president of our company are divinely guided in all their undertakings. The infinite intelligence of my subconscious mind makes all decisions through me. There is only right action in all our business transactions and in our relationship with each other. I send the messages of peace, love, and goodwill before me to the office. Peace and harmony reign supreme in the minds and hearts of those in the company, including myself. I now go forth into a new day full of faith, confidence, and trust. This business executive repeated the preceding meditation slowly three times in the morning, feeling the truth of what he affirmed. When fearful or angry thoughts came into his mind during the day, he would say to himself, peace, harmony, and poise govern my mind at all times. As he continued disciplining his mind in this manner, let me repeat that. As he continued disciplining his mind in this manner. So he was disciplining his mind. He was reprogramming his subconscious to bring him what he wanted. All the harmful thoughts ceased to come. Remember it. He didn't say it one time <laughs> as he continued disciplining his mind. So it, it, it took some time. It doesn't say how long. 
Okay, but all the harmful thoughts ceased to come and peace came into his mind. He reaped the harvest. Subsequently, he wrote me to the effect that at the end of about two weeks of reordering his mind, so now we know about how long this took, the president and the vice president called him into the office, praised his operations and his new constructive ideas, and remarked how fortunate they were in having him as a general manager. He was very happy in discovering that man finds happiness within himself. Okay. We will go ahead and pick back up here on Monday. Hey, hey, hey. So more of you have joined us since we got started. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Glad to have you all here with us. It's awesome. Okay, so here's what we're going to do now. What I would like to do, like I said, is leave some time for you guys so that we can have a discussion. So this is an opportunity for you guys to share your thoughts and uh, share your experiences. And if you've had successes in manifesting money and wealth in your life, then feel free to share those stories with us if you like. If you have anything that you'd like to discuss or talk about that we either have been studying today or in days previous to today, we can go ahead and you can share that. The other thing that you can do is go ahead, if you've had any aha moments, eye-opening things happen, anything that stick, stuck out for you today or in previous things we've studied, share that. And finally, the one that most people tend to want to do, which is totally cool, is if you have any questions in relationship to what we've been studying today, uh, what we've studied in the past, and or in relationship to manifesting more money and wealth in your life, you're welcome to go ahead and ask those questions. So what we do is we just come off of mute and we start sharing either what it is that we wanna comment on or whatever question it is that we have, just come off mute and we'll take in the order that you come off and hear your comments and answer your questions. So this is your time. Hi, Kevin. I'm usually hey, the first one to hit on mute. Um, I've, I've talked before about my friend who has a lot of illness in her life and, and she's very wealthy, uh -huh. but this, this, what we just read and the lady with the arthritis in England, you know, it's such a typical picture of her where when we go out in public, well, before COVID uh, with social groups and so on, everybody congreg congregates around her and, and everybody is her friend in her misery, basically, because they ask her about her health and all that. And, and she, she continually produces drama in her life. And, and she likes it. You yep. know, I think she's really <laughs> enjoying it because she's enjoying all the attention. She loves to be the attention of, of a group, of yep. wherever she goes. However, when it's just her and I together, She's really funny. She makes me laugh all the time. So that kind of contradicts, is that con con contradicting no, no. Us it, So what she does is you have a vibration, Francine, that you're typically in. And it sounds to me like it's typically pretty positive, okay? If she wants to be around you, she recognizes that she actually has to, she, she not at a conscious level, but at a subconscious level, she recognizes that if all she was to do was talk the way she does it, when it was only you and her, that you wouldn't spend the time with her that you spend with her. <laughs> so she does whatever she thinks is necessary to get people to pay attention. And in your case, because you're not as open to the negative, she's not gonna put out as much negative. She might put out some, but she recognizes that she would lose you as a friend and associate if she overdid it with your, she's doing her. Does that make her a very manipulative type person? She could be, yeah. She it depends on what it what her motive is. Um, what I would say is this: when you and her are together, here's how you can you, you're going to be able to read her vibration at the time. If her vibration is positive and happy and joyful, you'll feel it. Her words and will can only say so much, but don't listen to her words 
next time. I mean, listen, right? But pay attention to her. Let the, let the words just kind of float out there and let her talk, but pay attention to the energy she's putting off. And if it's positive towards you or, or when she's around you, it's probably genuine, okay? Or in your presence, she becomes the better person that she really is. But when she's around other people that will suck up and take part in the misery, you know, then she becomes a worse person. We, we all have both sides to us. <laughs> uh, the, the ideal is, is to only bring out the good side because we, we, none of us are perfect. And so that same thing, when we're around negative things and negative people, we tend to be more negative. That's why we should be inclined to avoid that as much as possible and do what we can to mitigate those situations. And if we end up in those situations, like we've talked about in the past, you know, if somebody throws mud on you, how long are you going to wait before you change your clothes and take a shower? <laughs> how long right. are you going to wallow in it? Right. Um, right. But so how do you feel about her when you're around her and it's just the two of you? Is it enjoyable? Do you feel uplifted or do you feel used? No, I, you know, we went to France one time together and, and we went to the beach one time together and, and I laughed the whole time, you know? Cool. Uh, and, and she's very high maintenance. Like in the morning, she takes a really, really long time to put herself okay. together. Yeah, because she doesn't care about, because she cares mostly about her. Right. Yeah. And, and, but she's made me laugh. However, whenever we catch up on the phone, you know, because mm -hmm. uh, we've not been seeing, not being seen too sure. many of my friends because of COVID, um, all she talks about is all the drama that's going on in her life, you know, yeah. <laughs> and that's not very pleasant. <laughs> so don't allow it. Meaning? Well, are you, you okay? Like, are, you, are, are you okay with tell it? Are you okay with telling her, hey, let's change the subject and think of something positive to talk about? Well, I don't want to sound mean either, you know, her, yeah, well, her, her mother's yeah. not well and, and so on and so forth. So, okay. Well, she's got 5 million other people that pay attention to her that way. Okay. It sounds like. Yes, she does. Okay. So, you know what? You have plenty of people that you probably have shared this with and that are, you know, <laughs> supporting you in, in the misery, but I want to support you in the positive. Remember when we went to France and did such and such? That was so much fun laughing okay. together and you get where I'm going with it. Okay. Yep. Yep. That's Point out that you, advice. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome, Fredsy. Uh Landon, you came off. Do you have something to say or I had a question. So um, I've been going through my visualizations in the morning and night, kind of visualizing my lifestyle and where I want to be and all of that. But um, as I'm going through like my day to day life, is it beneficial to kind of put myself in that lifestyle? Like, like say I go golfing on just the regular public golf course, but I want to be on my private country club, you know, is it beneficial to like want them in the in the moment like pretending i'm actually there or is it more just like in your more of a okay. um, a meditative state let me ask you a question what do you think i think yes for sure you're right and i've, I've been trying <laughs> to do it yeah you're, you're so, right okay yeah. i kind of figured that was the answer but uh-huh it, it's a hundred percent anytime you can do it is the answer right however from a subconscious perspective when you're first waking up or dozing off to go to sleep, typically those are moments where your, your brain is in a different state and it's just a little bit easier, okay? But that doesn't mean, remember, everything matters. So the more frequently you can do it, the better. It's okay. just the ease at which it comes in when you can relax like that. But also anytime you're having fun with any thoughts that you're having, stay there. Okay, yeah, it has been fun. Um, it took a while to figure out you know, exactly what I wanted. And, uh -huh. and that was kind of difficult because I was visualizing one thing and then I kind of realized that I didn't really like it that much. Like I did, yeah. but I was like, yeah. And it kind of, it's been like, you know, um, a path kind of figuring out exactly where I want to be. So I've kind of jumped around a little bit, but it has been fun now that I finally figured out what I want to be doing. Yeah. You know, part of that too comes from the society, right? And the people we've been around, we hear 
we think we're supposed to have or want certain things. And then when we really get down to it, to what we want, we go, that's kind of what they want. <laughs> yeah. so not necessarily what I want, right? But we think we're supposed to want or be or have certain statuses or things that are representative of success or whatever. And man, if you, it, I, I don't know what it is you want to do, but if you want to go surf all day long and you can attract the money and lifestyle to do that, and that's what makes you have fun. And another person would have a blast building a huge company and figuring out how to solve world hunger. Don't feel that you have to want to solve world hunger to be a good person. If you want to go surf. <laughs> that's okay. Right. Can I add something to that? Yes, Francie. Yes, hey, Lyndon. Um, I was a member of a private golf course for a couple of years only, but all you remember, you know, you can think about when you're at the golf course as one of the places anyway, that you get to be very pampered when you're a member of a private club like that. And people look up to you. And, and at first it kind of feels funny because uh, and a little bit uncomfortable because you go, wow, you know, I'm getting a lot of attention and you're not used to do to getting a lot of attention and being respected and, and addressed at, you know, as if you're, you know, somebody with a higher status. And um, at first it's, it's, it's harder to, to uh, accept, but then again, you know, if you think, hey, I'm worth it, <laughs> I'm worth it receiving all this attention i'm worth you know being treated that way and and experiencing all this wonderful stuff i think it has helped me out anyway so it, it might help you out in your visualization your visualization yeah i appreciate that i've also been trying to visualize like uh, good relationships with like you know say the guy that gets my bag ready and i'm like you know throwing him a 20 just for helping me out and like you know um He's like, oh, hey, welcome, Mr. Odom. Glad you made it. And then like having little interactions with different people and like trying to build that up because it is new. Yeah, and, and they clean your clubs after. And <laughs> yeah, yeah that's awesome. there's a lot of, yeah, they do a lot of things for you. <laughs> yeah, can't wait. <laughs> well, you're doing it now. So continue doing it, Landon, and it'll become your physical reality. Yeah. But it's the, it's the repetitiveness of it and the powerful emotion of doing it joyfully and happily that will help program it more quickly. Cool. I also, um, I had this visualization and this might help other people in the group um, of coming on here and sharing the experience. Because one thing that you say at the end is if y'all have manifested anything in your lives, wealth or an experience, please feel free to share. And so I've been like kind of running through and Sometimes I'll go through like, you know, everything you say in the, in, at the beginning of the meeting, like, oh, on Facebook, here's where you can find us. And so I like run through that in my head. And then at the end, I'm the one talking about my story. And so that's, that's another uh, tool that I'm using. So. Awesome. Well, and you wrote the 300 list and then you, you shut my computer down essentially and got to run the meeting <laughs> one day. So <laughs> because of your intention. So that's awesome. It, yeah. I'm going to keep going. I like it. <laughs> cool. Anybody else with any comments or questions or things they would like to share? I'm just grateful that this, I made it this first time. I kept putting it off, but uh, I've learned a lot and I've come from um, humble beginnings. So I need to change my mindset. I've lost a career and I'm starting a new career. I mean, I've lost a master's degree in nursing. I mean, I have my master's degree in nursing, but I lost my nurse practitioner career from being thrown under a bus by a physician who lied to the board of nursing here in Texas against me and I had no recourse. So that was uh, two years of nightmare. And so a door opened into the insurance business and I, finally made it into New York life and um, with your positive uh, program here I'm looking forward to putting this to good use and I'm very excited uh, to uh, go over the past programs that you've had and write things down and make notes 
because I want to do more with my wealth. I mean, my house is, my little house is falling apart <laughs> and I've got a, a lot to do to take care of myself and, and where I live and everything. And so, and get out of debt. I mean, that's the biggest thing I want to do is get out of debt, you know, cause I'm also, I, I have arthritis too. I have rheumatoid and osteoarthritis and one is an autoimmune disease. Mm -hmm. So I had like seven surgeries in seven years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's go, been crazy. Go Definitely go back to the beginning of the power of your subconscious mind. Go find the book or download it. Um, you're, you're not going to really like hearing this, but 90% of what you've experienced in your life, actually really 100, but I'll say 90 so it's easier to swallow. <laughs> um, what You didn't necessarily do it on purpose, but you did put out a vibration that, yes. uh, that the universe oh. matched. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, no, it was me. No, oh, okay. It was me. It was my, it was my thoughtlessness. I mean, I didn't consciously think about things beforehand because I was constantly stressed out. In fact, I don't even think it was the right choice to even get a master's degree in nursing and be a nurse practitioner. I don't think that was, and I, and I use God because I'm a godly person. Uh, that's okay. my focus. Yes. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't even think it was his will because I never had a good 16 years. I sacrificed for people and I never had a good career. Never did. So I finally said, okay, God, what do you want me to do instead of what I want to do? And now I'm very up, beat, positive. Uh, my first, the last, our fourth quarter last year, I just started um, with New York Life and securities. I'm, I sell uh, life insurance and I also do long-term care, but I made almost $7,000 with their bonuses, $7,000 in a month. That's awesome. It Paul. was great. Yeah. Yes. I'm just, <laughs> I mean, I finally, I'm, oh, let me tell you, it's been something, but I'm just grateful. I'm so grateful. Above all, I'm just so grateful that I finally, I'm getting there, y'all. Thank you. Bye. Sure. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, don't, please don't apologize. We're, we're glad to have you share and we're happy to have you with us. Thanks, Paula. Okie dokie. Any additional <laughs> comments or questions from anyone? I want to share. Yes. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Happy Friday, everybody. Um, I just want to say that I, I have a friend who can be a little on the um, negative side when it comes to money, like always saying that she doesn't have and it's too expensive and things like that. So over these like weeks that I've been attending um, the group, I've been telling her something different. And so she, I guess it's a new year. Everyone turns, turns out with the old and with the new. So yesterday she shocked me because um, she actually found the secret, an app mm -hmm. um, and she's been doing it. And she paid $4.99 for this monthly app. And I was like, so shocked at her because she would never have done something like that. Cause she would have been complaining that she has no money. But she's been so positive about it because uh, she's been, I guess, understanding that she had all these desires, but she kept t saying these negative things to herself. And instead, she last year got, got a job where she makes like double her salary, but she was still in the mode of she didn't have anything. She can't spend anything. And so it, her mentality stayed with the, with the income of the last job. And um, so I was just so happy to hear her tell me um, about the secret app. And then she also shared with me that there's a movie that came out um, with Katie Holmes um, mm -hmm. called The Secret. Yeah, yeah so I, I didn't know. Yeah, it's one that Rhonda Byrne had a, a role in doing. Um, go watch it. It's cool. Um, okay. It's, it will be, it's very different than The Secret. Okay. okay. And I, I wish in the movie they would have got into some detail about you know, how it works kind of thing. Um, but anyhow, yeah, just go watch the movie. It, it, if that movie had come out prior to The Secret, the and if that was the first movie, you would have been like, eh. <laughs> it's, a okay. good, it's a good movie as entertainment. And because you've seen The Secret and you guys understand a bit about the law of attraction, it'll mean so you'll take a different meaning out of it. But people that were like hardcore, like, well, Secret Law of Attraction, you watch this, you'll be like, 
well, darn it, they didn't teach the world because you want the world to understand this stuff. And you're like, they didn't really do it in such a way that people are going to come back and say, tell me more. There, okay. there, there might be a few, right? But mostly <laughs> most people are going to see it as entertainment. At least that's how okay. I, I, I felt it. I was like, man, <laughs> you know, you have an opportunity because you have people that are well known to help get the word out. You, you should have maybe done something above and beyond or said, hey, for more foam on how to do it, at least send them somewhere. And it didn't do that. So, okay. Okay. Well, I just, I just thought that there is hope for my friend. So there's hope for of all of us, of course. And we're in this every single day. Well, those of us that come and we are in your energy and then we're feeding off of it. And then we're also, you know, changing those mind things that are blocks that we, that we have. Um, but, but also I wanted to ask a question. Yes. I, in the last two years, I've been delving into the road of the fire movement. And so I almost feel like I've learned to not want all of these great, big, elaborate things. And I feel like in a way I'm like conflicted sometimes because I hear people say, you know, I want a billion dollars or I want this and that. And like, and I just feel like I've gone in the opposite direction because of the fire movement in terms of not like looking long-term. And so not really wanting all of those big flashy things because I've realized that in my lifetime I had credit card bills and I didn't spend my money right and so I felt like I had to shut down and go in the reverse to then put myself in a better position to have my money work for me instead of me work for my money mm -hmm. so I just feel this conflict sometimes about should I be wanting big things or should I just stay the course that I that I'm on okay. the path yes okay okay so here's what Bob Proctor would, would say to this, okay? Because he said it a zillion times, so it stuck with me. Never increase, decrease your lifestyle to meet your income. Always increase your income to meet your lifestyle. Number one. Okay. Now, but let me go back to what I said to Landon also. Just because other people say this equals success or that's a symbol, if that doesn't resonate with you, don't just go buy it because the world says to go get it. Okay. So there's, okay. there's that. In other words, make sure it's what you want and don't worry about the fire movement and don't worry about the, uh, anybody else. Does Lillian want this? Okay. And, and does it bring, when you put, when you think about this particular thing to be, do, or have, right? Because we, whether it's something we want to be, do, or have, when the thought comes to mind and you own it as already yours, even though it may not have shown up yet but you feel it is already yours. If it makes you feel good, then you want it. It's totally cool. If you're like, okay. if you have to kind of fight yourself to want it, then, mm -hmm. uh, then just let it go. Or maybe stick it on the 300 list and don't pay much attention to it, right? Stick okay. it on a list of, hey, you know what? This is pretty cool, but I'm not, that's not where a bunch of my attention is. And maybe it'll show up, right? If that's something that you would actually enjoy having in your life. But for the most okay. part, the when we're there, we're hurting ourselves. The the fire. There's nothing wrong with people that want less stuff, okay? And you know what I mean. That are if we're happy with a lot. But if the reasoning behind it is is because I don't want to work harder, I don't want to work more hours, I don't want all this stuff. Well, then that's where we're messed up because I. I multiplied my income 10 times and reduced my hours from 50, 60 down to 15, right? <laughs> so there, it's not, there are people out there that have what it is they want without going through the pain and suffering that others think they would have to go to. But the programming on the fire side of it is, is that, hey, in order to have more, it's going to take more of me to receive it you know, more energy, more, all this stuff. And I don't want to put that in, into it. So, but if, you know, if somebody's happy living that way, then that's incredible if that's what they really want. But if they're skimping on something for that specific reason, again, they're being programmed by people outside of themselves instead of saying, hey, what I really want is this. And I'm trusting that God in the universe can show me how to receive it in a way that is creative and doesn't get in the way of other people receiving what they want or it can be a win-win situation for the entire world. Okay. 
Okay. I think I need to wrap my head around that because I, I do feel like because I wasn't do I wasn't a good steward of the money and then mm-hmm. I got into credit card debt and stuff like that. And so right. then I, I kind you're of worried about your like, subconscious mind's going, you're gonna screw it up again. Not, not that, that in, so much, in a sense, I, I, but meaning you've you've had an okay. experience where you got in debt or yet yeah, right? Yes, and that was yeah. one thinking. But then, like in the last couple of years, I I saw that my my growth and my stocks and things and exactly. real estate and whatever, right? I saw it all increase. So I feel like there is an abundance, and I uh-huh. do feel I so do feel like you yeah. had a conflict going on, devil angel kind of thing, right? <laughs> Okay. I'm not saying it right, but you you have you have yes. two ideas in your subconscious mind that are very real. One, I can succeed and do this, and the other, oh, but I did this and failed. Right? It not as much anymore. That's why, yes. right? Yes. Not, but right. It's, there's a little if it imp back there still messing with you a little bit occasionally. It says, hey, go hang out with the fire movement for a while because it's going to keep you from growth." <laughs> Okay. Okay. So that's what I mean. I guess I got to, I got to work through that some more because I, I do feel like there's an abundance and I do feel like my being more mindful of my money um, mm-hmm. helped me think of it as a game and that I needed to grow this, this money. And it just got really fun. And then like, oh, well, what else can I do with this money? And what else can I do? And so I kind of feel like now my thinking is, is that I, I feel better knowing that I have a lot of zeros in my bank accounts and, and, you know, just, it's just a a happier place to be in than when I, when I wasn't. So, Uh okay. I got it. Thank you. Yeah. And the beans beans and rice diet's not always a lot of fun. (laughs) Oh no. (laughs) I don't do that. (laughs) Yes. I don't, I don't do that, but because I eat on the healthy side, I, it doesn't bother me to do that. See, it kind of goes with my, you know, who I am kind of thing. <laughs> Thank awesome. you. You're welcome. <laughs> All right. Well, we are, for those of you, you know, that saw that this is 45 minutes, obviously we went past that. And truthfully, we typically do not, I don't try and hold anybody hostage, but people ask questions and share comments. But just so you know, if you have a time restraint and you leave, can always go back to the recording. Nobody's trying to hold you hostage. Um, anybody have any last questions or comments that they want to share uh, before we go today? Like you won't sleep well tonight if you don't get this question answered. <laughs> Maybe we can help you out. Everybody doing pretty good? Yes. Hi, Kevin. It's Takira. Hey. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm kind of in a downward spiral here. When we when we hung up yesterday, I took your advice and I chilled and laid down. Are you in the but hospital? Then, um, I am, Kevin. And today is my day to go to the hotel. Okay. But um, I got sick this morning. I don't. Yeah, my you, back you got, started you hurting. So- I started. Let's take your video off, but keep your audio on because your bandwidth's a little bit low. Oh, okay, let's stop this. How do you do this? Oh, there you okay. go. You did it. I can still hear you. Oh, I'm oh, sorry. But now we got your. Okay, got it. Okay, yeah, your bandwidth will be a little bit better. Yeah. There so you go. I guess my question is like, I've been doing good with like my thinking, but how did I end up here where? I was so excited for this. I mean, I'm not dead, <laughs> no, but I don't know how I got, I mean, I, I know I'm going to be honest, my menstrual came and it was very strenuous this this time. Okay. But then I vomited since 8 a.m. And I've been like doing what the book says about health and seeing the doctors, you know, say you're healthy, go home. That hasn't happened yet. I'm like, I'm just in so much pain. I don't know what techniques to use because I still want to go to my room in my hotel for the night. Um, yeah. But they just gave me some morphine and all this stuff. So I might be a little off right now. Please <laughs> forgive me. Okay. But any tips on how to, because I want me back. I don't like being sick. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So part, and by the way, part, part of the sickness that's created what's going on right now it may not go back over the last few days. It may go back somewhere else. 
but there there's some conflict going on in your mind between what you want and things that you're afraid of mm-hmm. and so your subconscious mind is getting in the way instead of helping mm-hmm. you at the moment okay let's let's not really go way way back into trying to figure out like where this comes from like did it come from your childhood or this that or the other mm-hmm. what i what i would do is this Relax, which obviously you're you're in a yeah. They got me falling right, like, but but oh, you, yeah. you know the pain or whatever. Why don't you for now, in your head, whether you mm-hmm. physically end up there or not, in your mind, what would you be doing if you did go to that apartment you rented? Oh man, I'd be putting on my skirt and my high heel shoes, Kevin, going down to the rooftop or up to the rooftop, looking at the beautiful view, having a glass of of wine or some champagne and and talking to the bartenders and the the the, pa- the patrons there okay so that would just be my happy old self so so go be your happy old self in your mind and say something like this to god <laughs> okay okay say something to this effect hey god obviously today's oh. not going the way i thought it was going to you know However, I trust you, Mm -hmm. and whether it be today, tomorrow, or sometime soon, I know what it is that I wanted to go do today will happen, and maybe you're even protecting me from something right now I don't know about. Please help me to feel better, Mm -hmm. and for now, I'm going to trust you, and I'm just going to have fun in my mind, so I'm going there right now anyways, (laughs) and I'm going to do it in my imagination, (laughs) in my mind. Help me to feel good while I do that and through positive anticipation actually manifest it in my life. It doesn't have to be today. It doesn't even have to be tomorrow. But help me get back to my happy, joyful self. And as soon as you're ready to, uh, to bring me back to you know that and give me what it is that I asked for, I receive it gratefully. I'm going to quit trying to push things through and shove things through. I'm going to take the advice I've been given, which is to chill out and relax. And I'm not going to take life so seriously anymore. Yeah. I, I'm taking this as a call that I've been pushing and shoving. I've been putting mm-hmm. deadlines and dates. And I really haven't asked mm-hmm. you to help me as much as I could. I've been telling you what I want, but I haven't been asking you really in a way that is as respectful as it should be. Because wow. remember what you told me, you know, it's like, yeah, it is. Hey, God, give me, yeah, like, God's your butler or something. No, God's not your butler. Yeah, yeah. Right. I talked to him <laughs> like, yeah, I know, I know. He's my friend and my my way maker and my prince of peace and my king and my father. Yes. And I guess I've not been giving him the honor that he's due. So he had to like sit me on my tush for a minute. Um, he didn't sit you on your tush, but he cool. allowed it. Luckily, happen. I don't feel any pain. Yeah, you're on your tush, but <laughs> yeah, that's, he allowed that's because it to happen, he allowed it to know. happen. Yeah, <laughs> he allowed it to happen so that you can feel the difference between being uplifted and being let down. And he doesn't let you down. He doesn't give you these trials. Everybody understand this. God only gives good. Okay. okay? It's, it's a program in your subconscious mind right now, and it's the conflict going on, and it's your, your natural tendency to push and shove and be impatient. Mm-hmm. You're also not a very patient person. No. I know. No. I, I, we all know. I see Landon's got this big grin. We, we've gotten to know you. you okay. know, Landon we, knows. Ricky yeah, we knows. Love, we love you. Mm-hmm. We also know that you want it all, and you want it yesterday. And <laughs> <laughs> and you need to actually give it give it a chill pill and okay. you receive what you want but as long as you're pushing and shoving force negates and you're you're creating resistance and the resistance okay. finally has worn you out yeah all right i think i've learned my lesson well good uh, <laughs> good Thanks, Kevin. I'm yeah, sorry. Welcome. I actually feel no pain right now. So <laughs> I'm going to read that book Monday. I am, I am, I am, I am the richest person. But <laughs> other than that, I'll be looking at your videos to keep me healthy and grounded. 
Well, and I think a bunch of us will pray and put out good thoughts towards you. So yeah, you'll be up and running again pretty soon here. You guys are awesome. Thanks so much for your help. Yeah, you're welcome. Feel better. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much, Lillian and Francine. We'll be out of there in no time. Just enjoy the morphine while so. you got it. <laughs> oh, it enjoy is the legal so drug while the drugs are still today, right? <laughs> <laughs> you guys are awesome. <laughs> 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 Namaste. <laughs> Namaste. Oh, boy. Well, you don't want to say that. Okay, long. You're laughing. <laughs> yeah. She's laughing, so she's yeah, I'm laughing now. <laughs> but I was crying for two hours. I was in here crying. Oh, oh man. <laughs> well, see, you now you have this recording day. till tomorrow morning. Yeah, I'll, oh, I'll make sure I'll, I'll make sure I post it within the hour. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. All right, everybody, nice I'm going to let you go, and I look forward to seeing everybody on Monday. You have a wonderful weekend, everyone. Thanks, Thanks so Kevin. You too. Much. Bye, you too. Care you have a weekend. Bye. Feel better. Have a great weekend. Thank you. Bye, if you need him, call Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> call God. <laughs> He's always there. Absolutely. <laughs>